Okay, we'll catch up with everybody else later. So let's get started. Do, 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 do. AIs, um, nothing too exciting there. Um, I do not see an Austin on the call, so we have no update on the SDK, which I, but I don't think they had a, I'm sorry, I know we did not have a meeting, so there probably isn't anything to update there. Other than to say, um, I will mention that I bumped into <clears throat> Mark Peake, who's not gonna be able to make the call today because I believe he's traveling, that they did get permission to transfer over their Go SDK. Uh, he just needs to actually make it happen. So that should happen relatively soon. Other than that, I don't believe there's been any real progress on the SDK's front. Uh, moving forward, Kathy, is there anything you'd like to update us on relative to the workflow subgroup? Um, oh, really? Thank you. No? Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of background noise. People can go on mute if you're not talking. I'd appreciate that. Um, let's see, KubeCon. So, um, uh, but, 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 Kathy Clemens and I had a discussion last week to, to, um, to talk about the preparations for the deep dive and intro sessions for KubeCon. Um, if you guys are interested, uh, there's a Google Doc here under update. Um, I did put together some very, very rough slides just as an outline of our various topics. If anybody's interested in contributing to that, even if you're not going there, please feel free to look it over and correct things if you see that things are wrong. As of right now, the slide deck really won't have a whole lot, just sort of an outline of what we agreed to talk about. So uh, uh, I really want to wait uh, a couple of weeks uh, to see something close to the final version. You might be better off. But anyway, feel free to take a look if you guys want to. Uh, interop work. As far as I can tell, no one's really put any comments into the interop demo Google Doc that I put out there. Um, I really need some feedback here in particular on the type of application we want to do. Uh, the two leading candidates are the uh, natural language translation, meaning, you know, go from English to French to German, back to English or something like that, um, or a Mad Libs kind of thing where each participant in the demo just generates a random adjective, adverb, whatever, and we put it into sentences and see what kind of funny things we come up with. I personally, I'm leaning a little more towards the Mad Libs thing because I'm not sure how many participants actually support natural language translation. And if everybody just calls out to some popular service on the internet, then that doesn't really do a whole lot for us. So I really need some feedback from you guys. Um, this is probably not gonna be done in time for Shanghai, but we are looking to do something for the KubeCon session in Seattle. So um, people probably need a lot of time to you know, put code together. So please do comment on that if you get a chance. I really need some feedback there. All right, any topics or any uh, questions or comments on any of the topics that we just ran through? All right, cool. In that case, um, Richard Hartman is on the call. He's from the open metric side of uh, CNCF. He and I had a conversation a while ago about the possibility of some sort of collaboration between our two groups. And we thought it might be good to just spend 10 or 15 minutes just to um, have him talk to this group uh, to share some of the ideas that we, we bounced around. Um, so Richard, do you wanna uh, unmute yes. and uh, join? Thank you. Yes. Uh, also, sorry for, for the background noise, uh, but that seems to have subsided. Uh, for general information, I will be at both KubeCon, Shanghai, and Seattle. We can also sit down in person if need be. I also try always to be a little bit early, a little bit late in leaving. So uh, there's actually time to sit down uh, in peace and quiet outside of the actual KubeCons. So open metrics. Um, most of you will have heard of Prometheus, which is the de facto monitoring solution within the cloud native space uh, in the meantime, especially since uh, it's really well integrated with Kubernetes. In Prometheus or with Prometheus, we are the second project to graduate within CNCF, and there's quite some velocity behind what we do. Yet we have the, um, frankly, there's a ton of political stuff around uh, projects or even vendors supporting a competing product slash a, a competing project. So what we did is we took that standard, which, uh, which was already existing for how it emits data and it just data into its database and basically updated it a little bit, uh, mostly with input from Google and from Uber uh, into something more versatile, which is still backwards compatible with the Prometheus exposition format. And that's where, what we're currently doing, basically creating a standard for transmitting metric data uh, over the internet or whatever um, with a, a special um, focus on, on the cloud native space. We already started to, to branch out a second thing, which is not yet fully done. Uh, 
which would probably be called open stats or something, which is more like Statsy where you actually push data in as opposed to where with open metrics you pull data. There's also some other operational differences. Um, certain large deployments need that kind of thing. So we decided to split it into two to keep it nice and simple. But we also plan to expand beyond that. And that would then cover, for example, events, log files, traces, all these things. So basically what we are doing is we are defining a format through which you can uh, transmit data. And from what I can see uh, of, of cloud events, basically what you're doing is you're defining what needs to be transmitted on the wire while being flexible about how the exact format looks. And that's basically where I see uh, the potential for collaboration in as much as we have an opinion about how things should look and ideally things for metrics, for stats, for logs, for traces should look very, very similar so people learn it once and then they basically can, can deal with that data uh, no matter what type of data it is. Whereas you only have minimum requirements on certain data types which need to be uh, exposed but else you don't really care about the format. And that's where I see the intersection or the possible intersection that basically you support something which uh, looks like open metrics, but for events. And we, on the other hand, basically support it and then we call it whatever. That's basically the really short version. Right, right. Any comments or questions from people? I know you guys aren't that shy. You can go ahead. I can also, if need be, I can also <laughs> expand on stuff or uh, on why and how and such. Yeah, yeah so I, I, but I might don't have to. No, no, I, I think it might be useful actually to expand a little bit on, because you were very quick on it, on, on where you see the, the collaboration happening. I mean, put it in very precise terms. Uh, like, okay. for example, do you see us producing a cloud event tra mapping for? Open yes. metrics, or you know, how, how did you see the collaboration? Or what, what, what was the what would the collaboration result in? Put it that way. Um, ideally, it would result in uh, a format which is supported by cloud events, which is also supported by whatever we call it on our side for for uh, for handling events, and then um, basically we define that you have to emit certain metadata about events within that within that spec within that format, and um, you define that it can be done through that format and that basically both look the same. So we have something where people can use something existing, which is coming from the metric space, of course, then stuff actually looks the same. Maybe it's best if I just copy and paste something in for people to do that before I try and explain this. That's probably better. Um, is everyone aware of what Prometheus and how Prometheus does things? No. Okay, very good. So let's start at that point. Uh, So basically we have things, uh, we have a text, we have a format. Prometheus proper uh, actually um, decommissioned the proto, but uh, Google needs it, so open metrics it's back. For our stuff, we are actually quicker in doing things with uh, just uh, parsing text, which was surprising, but that's the case. I'm just going to look into the the agenda, okay. So I'm going to put the link into the agenda I put in there just now. If you click on that link, what you'll see is uh, current live data from a demo instance of Prometheus. And this is how the Prometheus exclusive formats look, uh, format looks like. But basically in, in this specific case, it would look exactly the same if, if, it, if you're doing open metrics. So what you're seeing here is a certain format of how to define data which is attached to things. You have the name of the type of the time series, then you have certain label sets, uh, which are basic key value pairs, and then you uh, feed different keys with different values. This opens an n-dimensional matrix within, uh, with which to slice and dice your data. And at the end, because this is metrics, you just have one single uh, number, and this is the actual data being transmitted, or the actual value of the data being transmitted. Um, so if you look at that, you can easily see how, how, how you could uh, transform something which is already now being done in one of the formats of cloud events 
to just look the same uh, in respect to the format. And that's basically what, what I'd like to see uh, come out of this possible correlation, collaboration. So wait, so what, what are you, so uh, in which direction? So what, what are you, I'm not clear what you're expecting. Um, basically in both directions. So again, from, from what we do at Open Metrics, um, we actually named the group in which we are doing this on GitHub Open Observability to deliberately expand the purpose uh, beyond just metrics. Of course, you need more for true observability. I don't have to convince you of that. Um, and that we say as a CNCF member project, okay, this can or should look like that. And you as also a CNCF project say, okay, it can also look like that. And just by happenstance, it's exactly the same. And then we just, I don't know, say, you support the open whatever format within cloud events and the open whatever format of cloud events uh, also supports seeing, uh, sorry, supports cloud events. There's yeah. something on the background, I'm being distracted. Yeah, so, so, so far what we're doing with cloud events is we're um, expressing distinct events and then um, are effectively dispatching and uh, are routing events. Um, that's, and, and and they are different from, so I think what we're mostly, we've been so, so far been focusing on also in our interoperability samples in most of the discussions um, are events which are um, actionable, which means that you raise an event from a, a source, um, something just happened, and then you dispatch that to a handler which sits somewhere on the other side of the world, and that then goes and reacts to it. It looks like what you have here is more a data stream um, of observability things, which are not necessarily immediately actionable, but they they rather need uh, later processing, which is a bit of a different pattern, um, um, and which we've also discussed. Like we've had, we have extensions that um, are allowing to put you know sequence numbers on on cloud events, etc. Um, but we're really looking more at discrete events, which are individually handled and then individually dispatched for pub subsystems. Um, and they are individually invoking functions rather than looking at streams of events. And what you seem to have here is an event stream. I get what you mean. Um, so, and that's where basically, um, or to do the other, other way around, um, your focus is on a different level than our focus. Our focus is to have a common format which people can can basically parse and rely on certain aspects of having of having uh, a certain format for the data to make it easier to then uh, for example most most systems today or the legacy systems are hierarchical data structures you don't have them that's great um, we don't have them either so that's for example something which people should be able to rely on to have certain baseline assumptions about how data is being structured at the conceptual level but and we but, both already just, just to finish your thought oh yeah, if ahead. you if you send something actionable and that's i know that that is basically your current focus you don't care as much about uh how the format looks we care about uh, a lot about how the format looks and that's where basically this is coming in I don't really care what is being transmitted as long as the format looks the same for all the different types of data. That's where we are coming from. So we're to looking at two totally different layers. Think of it as, exit. I mean, HTTP is the new TCP IP. You've probably heard of that one. So we want to be the, the format within HTTP uh, to transmit data. And then people basically just have something which looks alike. and can reuse parts of the parser, blah, 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 blah. So why do we need to have another data encoding? You don't need to. If you say you don't, you're not interested, then that's totally fine. So I'm not trying to, to convince anyone. My only thing is I want to make sure that people are aware this exists, how it works. And if it's interesting, then great. We should collaborate. If not, no hard feelings. <laughs> So quick, quick question, but uh, Richard, do you ever see a time when the, um, where the data that you're displaying here on this page would ever be transmitted as a cloud event? 
Mm. No, this specific type of data, no, no. But this is just for demonstration of how the format looks. Of course, it makes it easier to, to discuss things um, when you know what is being talked about specifically. Uh, but so basically, if you have or you have an event, you want to transmit that event. What I would expect to happen if you are open whatever compatible is you have a format in which you say, okay, this is the name of my event. That would be the first part. Uh, for example, in you, where you have the cursor go GC duration seconds, obviously you had a different name. Then all the metadata which you mandate that must be included with an event would come within the curly braces. And then at the end you would have the actual value of the event or maybe in your case you would put everything into the curlies and as key value pairs. And that's basically it. And you send this over the line. And the only thing I would care about is that this looks basically like that. So someone who's familiar with open metrics, open stats. Again, we are uh, also looking at, at transmitting traces with the same uh, with the same format, blah, blah, blah. That this basically looks the same. And that's all I care about, at least on this level. Right. Where do you keep your specs? Uh, mainly in our heads, and this is a large problem of where we currently are. Um, we have, um, so basically we have uh, a bi-weekly call. And we're currently in the phase where, where we are both implementing reference code, and we already have reference code, which emits uh, the format. And also, uh, we are currently writing an internet draft with the purpose of this becoming an actual RFC. Uh, but it's not that yet done. So there's bits and pieces of the, of the internet draft in our repository, which I'm going to link to in a second. Um, but again, this is not done yet. So you can't look at the full spec, which is also why this is a good shorthand uh, of showing where the format ends up at, to just look at demo, demo traffic or demo format. Yeah, without, without a proper wire. So do you have a type system? Uh, uh, so basically what you see here is what, what we're doing. So it's always going to be transmitted through uh, over HTTP, always. Yes, exactly. Thank you, though. Um, and it always is uh, either UTF-8 uh, UTF encoded text or it is proto. And then you have um, what you see there. That's the basic, uh, that's the basic thing. There is a pull request open for the, um, for the internet draft. I can also, it's probably useless for you, I can also link the uh, Python code for emitting, for emitting. Um, no, the question is, data. the question is, you, you are showing numbers there in that data. Yes. Do, is there, is there, do you have a formal type system? Yes, of course. It's all 64 uh, if you go by proto. If you do it by, um, if you do it via text, we basically uh, took, took the uh, shorthand or whatever that as this is text, you can fit more than float 64, but by the format, you would be required to always have float 64 as a minimum. You're so allowed you, to have float 128 at the end. Which means you can only represent fractional, fractional numbers uh, and, uh, okay. Yes, in the metric space. Again, this is geared exactly and only for metrics and a lot of the design decisions made here are being, uh, have been done because this allows us to, to compress extremely well in the database, like really extremely well. So what you see here would not work for events for obvious reasons. Of course, this is just for metrics. But okay. if you ignore the, the number on the right-hand side and basically look at the name and the key value pairs within the curlies, that's uh, what you would be using. Well, since we're both since we're both about transferring, so both projects have a notion of events, um, and um, I, I've I assume that the data that you have in your project is useful potentially for people who are using and want to use the cloud events format. It'll be interesting to map one one to the other and see whether there's convergence potential. But we would have to have we would have to have a, a effectively a full wire specification to look at. Yes, agreed. We don't have that yet, and basically uh, we will have it soon. Um, this is a good place uh, where, where we have a deeper look. I can also just uh, 
take some random demo data which I have in your repository and transform it into what I would expect this to look like. Of course, this uh, would, would basically short circuit the need of having the full spec already written out and you have also already something to look at. Um, then we go from there. Yeah, so I think what I'm hearing is uh, maybe revisit this topic once that other, once the specification is available for us to take a look at. Is that fair? Sounds good to me. Intermediate offer, I can, I can just transform some of your data into the format which I would expect to, to come out. Of course, this is probably 80-20 in, in explaining everything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, prefer, I'm preferring having a, a, a spec before, in concept before we're implementing something, um, because I would like to understand well, how, the, how those things conceptually align, um, because putting things in code is relatively easy, but making, having them make sense is a different thing. Totally fine, I don't have a preference. Okay, is, is there anybody else on the call who'd like to chime in here? Yeah, hey Doug, this is Austin. I've got a quick question for Richard. Mm -hmm. Hi Richard, um, I know very little about open metrics, um, but I'm just curious, what, what level of industry adoption does this effort have? So, um, as we are backwards compatible with, uh, with the Prometheus exposition format, we have over 300 different exporters written by dozens or hundreds of different entities. We are aware of either thousands or tens of thousands of companies actively using this wire format within the context of Prometheus. We have several competing projects and also competing vendors. I mean, we are a project, so we don't have a product to sell, but still there are vendors which have a competing monitoring solutions, which either adapted our, uh, our format or even just pulled in our libraries. Um, of course, Apache, so they can. Um, so there's tons of adaption in there. Google is currently uh, looking at making open census compatible with open metrics, or they're not looking at it, they're actively working on it. Uh, Uber is actively working on making their stuff uh, speak open metrics. I had Apple contact me two weeks ago. Um, there's tons of others. So basically there is already quite some adaption and also there is quite some interest in this. But this is only for the metrics side and for the stats side. Of course, the rest we didn't yet really start. Um, there's people interested, but we didn't really start this yet. Of course, we need to finish the metrics and the stats stuff first. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, the, okay. the backwards compatibility there uh, sounds like an awesome, awesome way to approach the whole effort. How, how long has Open Metrics been around? As an idea for, I think, 2015 or 2016 as something we actually are working on since last year. Okay, thank you. Okay. Cool, those are all my questions. Thanks, Richard. All right, no thank you. Anybody else have any questions, comments? Uh, hi, this is uh, Tapane. Uh, you, you said you are looking to integrate Prometheus into open metrics or, or actually build open metrics on top of that, does that include the alerting side and surfacing actual events as we are speaking about them from Prometheus and the related systems to users? Because I see that's where the biggest actual potential for collaboration would be, not in actual metrics, but what happens because of that. Yep. Um, so basically, currently, what uh, what Prometheus is doing. So Prometheus itself already is. There's already a branch which uh, which is able to ingest open metrics data. That's the metrics side. On the events of uh, of uh, Prometheus, I fully expect when we are actually done with defining something which uh, which transmits events, that Prometheus and Alert Manager would migrate to that. Uh, we are also currently looking at having a complete new system for alert things or event things within the Prometheus space to not only have an alert manager which basically throws out garbage or alerts and then doesn't know about them anymore or doesn't persist anything. So there is more of a user story about actually following up about stuff and, and persisting important information, blah, 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 as like the central uh, data point of something is open, I need to fix it. And I would expect everything which happens in the space to use uh, something which looks basically like what we're currently looking at. 
Uh, also, information Grafana is playing with something for for lock uh, for lock like syslog replacement, which is also used. Uh, and it basically looks the same. We just have um, text and not and not numbers on the right hand side, but else it looks the same. So this would all migrate to exactly this format, or with to this format family, let's say. I have one more question. Okay, I think we'll, yeah, go ahead, Clemens, but I think after this, we got to wrap it up. I yeah, think yes. my box yep, go on, go ahead. I'm, I'm curious, there's, so if you look at the, at the space of um, you know, eventing, telemetry, transmission, et cetera, um, there is MQTT, there's AMQP, there's Kafka, there's NATS, there's all kinds of streaming, specific streaming protocols, which are really good for this. And so I'm curious why you're bolting this HTTP. Um, basically, XKCD, I think it's 927 applies. Uh, there needs to be more standards. But seriously speaking, um, <laughs> uh, no, seriously speaking, um, what we see, especially in the cloud native space, is that HTTP really is the new TCP IP, and everything is an HTTP endpoint. And that is something which, uh, which all of Prometheus is built upon. Basically, you come, because it comes from Google or is stolen from or whatever, uh, and there that is already the case. But the cloud native space is also really, really getting into the, that corner where basically everything is an HTTP endpoint because it makes a ton of things a lot easier. You have the load balancers, you have all the streaming, blah, 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 blah. So you have a ton of, of working code and working processes which you can build on top of. And that's why we chose that approach. Yeah, there's also a lot of gRPC and all kinds of other things. So it's not, that's not necessarily true. But anyways, thank you. Yeah, that's true. Again, we also have Proto. So you can also uh, toss it in there, guess what, uh, what Google and Uber are planning to do. All right. Well, cool. Thank you, Richard, for doing that or for talking to us. Um, as I said, I think once you get that other specific, once you get the specification written, um, go ahead and ping me or us, and then we can probably have, have another conversation at that point. Does that sound fair? Sounds great. Um, it will probably be one or two more months. Again, I'm going to be at both KubeCons. Um, that's basically it. All right. Yes, that sounds great. All right. Thank you very much for coming and, and, and speaking to us today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, is it okay if I drop off the call? Because there's people waiting for me. Oh, of course. Yes, yes, please. Okay, perfect. And <laughs> okay. Thank you very much to whatever time soon you're in. And talk to you soon. Goodbye. Okay, thank you. Bye. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, so let's move on to the PRs. Uh, Clemens, you opened up one about encoding exceptions. Let me bring that up here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably mislabeled that a little bit or... or uh, it's, uh, That's fine. Because it's not about encoding exceptions, about encoding exceptions. Yes. Yes. Think, go ahead. Did we talk about this last week? I don't. Wait a minute. Did we? I don't think we did, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, yeah. maybe we didn't get to it because the, the other discussion. Was, yeah, that's I, probably it. Yeah. That's true, yes. Okay. Um, so that basically says that um, uh, can you go to the. Um, Where do you want me to go? AQP is a little, is a little outlandish for people to look at, I think. So we, HTTP is clearer, probably. Yes. Right here? Okay. Yes. Um, so effectively, cloud events um, extensions. So this is effectively creating an escape patch, and then something, ra someone raised that, and I, I can't remember. I think Doug did you. Maybe. Um, that if extensions may have to be specify their own HTTP headers, um, or they may have um, a different mapping rule for the attributes that they define in, in other ways. Um, and so a, this is effectively allowing an extension to do that. Um, so there are, because we're, we're, we have pretty hard and fast rules here in, in how the metadata headers actually map down, um, and if you have an extension, then that actually may have a diverging mapping. I think that was motivated by um, the uh, the other tracing thing, um, open tracing. What did we have? One of the extensions yeah. um, that has specific HTTP headers that must be used in a certain in a certain way. And this is basically saying, yeah, 
what you should do if you are implementing an extension, you could look, should look into the extension how it does that. Um, and um, so that's what that first paragraph is uh, is for. Um, and um, if you do this, then and that's what the second clause says is you can't just do that for HTTP. You also need to do that for all the other protocols that we have. So, quick question for you. I don't see anybody jumping on the queue, so let me go to ask my question. Would it be better to define this in one spot, like in the uh, extension document or in the primer, as opposed to having to do it in every single spec? Um, we can. Because as I was looking through this, it just seemed like the same text is kind of repeated in most, in most places, right? Uh, it's, um, it's, I think it's slightly different. Um, but yeah, it's it's in in the in the um, in essence, it's the same thing. Yeah, that that was my only question. Conceptually, I agreed with it. I just thought there might be a better way to to, to write it down. But yeah. any any questions or comments from people? Where would this mapping rules be defined? Are they part of the extension definition and all the transports do the? I don't know, parsing of these definitions, or does each extension need to modify transport, which sounds like a bad idea? No, just the, so the first is here, this, this extension, right? This would have to go and say, um, when used with, uh, uh, for HTTP, this, this spec needs to define how it wants to go and have its, its uh, HTTP headers look, right? Must be over, encode over HTTPS as headers um, in the following way. And it basically needs to go and, and uh, uh, define clearly how it wants the HTTP headers to look. And I think for interoperability, um, even if just HTTP is defined in distributed tracing, if you make an extension to cloud events, you must also define right here um, how that looks on NATS and NQTT and NQP. Because okay. we're doing all this, right? Yeah, I agree with that. But uh, in the sense that, uh, does each uh, do, does every extension writer have to add the transport to def actually define and implement these rules, or will they be parsed by by you know some generic parsing done by the transport? So no. Um, so. Effectively, this guides more or less our plugin model for the SDK, right? Um, ultimately, um, an extension should, if it can, um, avoid making any special any special rules. If it can't avoid them, which means it needs to go and, and align with an existing standard, um, uh, like here, open, uh, open trade, distributed tracing. Um, then it must do an override, and then it and that that override must be implemented effectively inside of the inside of the extension for um, this uh, for distributed tracing. So the way how the, S the SDK must be shaped is um, that it can go and influence how the headers work. Got it. That makes perfect sense. So okay. implementation will actually happen at SDK level. Thank you. Yeah. That's how I look at that. Like if you have overrides, if we allow overrides, if we allow diversion, diversions from the, 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 the standard mapping, then effectively the, whatever we create at these extension plugins, um, the transport must be able to go and, and call into them, right? Use them to say, oh yeah, and I'll have some metadata and now you need to go and please translate that for me into headers because I don't know how. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments on this? No questions on my end, but uh, looks looks super interesting. So thanks for this, Clemens. Um, always for you. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Clemens, would you prefer to keep it the way it is now, or would you rather find a single spot to put this text? I can go either way. I just wanted to raise the question. I'm, uh, um, I prefer 
um, having things in the place where you can't ignore them. Okay, that's fair. Um, which is right in the spec. Um, I, I'm I'm looking at this. I have I have another spec view, which are are all interdependent pro uh, documents right now with an MQP, and I'm also finding myself replicating a lot of wording. Um, just that you can't you can't escape the uh, um, the normative power of uh, what I want to say by ignoring a document. Right. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, I believe this has actually been out there for a while, so hopefully people have had a chance to look at it. But um, we haven't had a chance to actually discuss it till today. And um, let me put the question out there. Do people need more time to review this before I ask uh, for approval? And don't, do not hesitate to ask for more time. This, I don't think this is critical, so if you need more time, don't hesitate to speak up. But I also don't want to prematurely or unnecessarily block it either. Does anybody feel like they need more time can, to review can this? I, can I ask one thing? Um, e even though if each transport transport uh, spec defines how those how the extensions are mapped, it, would it not be quite useful to also have explain the basic idea behind this in the extensions specification or or the extensions part of the specification where we would. Where, where one would actually know about this without looking at individual transports, because now you wouldn't know about this if you went to look at extensions. If you wanted to make an extension and you just looked at the main yeah. spec and not transport bindings, that might be problematic. That's that's true. Um, I I can either I can either make that as an uh, as a follow on um, item, or I can go and extend this one uh, to tie that together. Um, I, I can do either way. So Clemens, how much additional text do you think beyond what we already have, which is what I'm highlighting right here? Uh, how, if, we do, if, we, if we need to put that into the extension section, then that's another paragraph probably. Right? Well, this is already in the extensions doc. Oh, it is. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's already a section on that. I, I guess that might yeah. Yeah, be I enough. See. Yeah, that's why, was, that's why I thought it might be a little bit of a duplicate text, but I'm okay with it if that's, if that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments from people? Is there anybody who objects to, in essence, taking a vote on this one? Okay. Is there any objection to adopting it then? All right, cool. Thank you, Mr. Clemens. Appreciate that. Sure. All right, next is Clemens. Oh, Should look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh, yeah, so this is the, this, are you picking the ugly first? Well, I don't know, which one, do, which one do you want me to go? This was the new one you just opened. Which one do you want me to go uh, with first? Yeah, that, well, that's true. I, I, made some, I made some changes to the other one because I, uh, let's look, look at the, the, the second one first. Okay, can do. Because that's actually so there. There are actually two commits that are sitting on top of each other, so that that makes. So now here I went all the way and renamed. So the text that we reviewed last week was kind of the core um, constraining the the um, uh, character set okay. down to all lowercase. And now I actually went through the work and and made it all lowercase through all the documents, including here in the HTTP spec and changing all the attributes and all the samples and all that. So that's kind of, when you scroll down, you'll see just you know, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase conversions. Yep. So that's not more exciting. The, the normative text is effectively the same. I didn't change that. I just did all the work to go, go through all the documents and make that um, change. Now you also see that you know, the effects of that, that um, this um, uh, runs together a little bit, and I think that will um, trigger some uh, uh, reaction from people who are um, keen on having everything nice and aesthetic. Uh, but I don't think it's all that terrible. Um, and okay, I think that's enough scrolling. I mean, you can, you, know, <laughs> do, you, can, you can scroll through the whole thing, but it's kind of mostly what it is. The, the dominant yeah. text is, is is the same as it was last week, and that is we're making it all lowercase, um, and we also allow letters. Now you can look at the other one. Okay, Dookie. Any place in particular here? Um, 
Yes. Um, we can go to the normative text, which yeah. is somewhere. Yeah, trying to, trying to find that. In spec.md, right? I guess spec.md. There we go. There we go. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, the underscore symbol. So you see how this underscore already is messing things up because it now makes it all um, uh, italics. I didn't escape it. And I need <laughs> We can't use it then, sorry. As I said, as I said, that's my point, right? The underscore is a dangerous symbol. Um, so the underscore from the ASCII character set and must begin with the lowercase letter. Um, and then, if it, so I, I'm just adding the underscore. But effectively, now that I have the underscore separator, word separator, now I'm also using it. And that's what I'm doing in this, in this variation, variation, where I'm now also using event underscore type, and I do this through the, like if you scroll down, I just remain, rename them all in appropriate way, cloud events version, I did that for all those, and rename them through the entire uh, document. And now this looks a little um, nicer, especially if you're a Python person, probably, um, uh, but it run, runs a little bit longer, um, and, uh, um, I'm, let's see, yeah, runs three characters long in that one. Um, and I'm okay either way. I'm leaning towards the first one, um, where it's all, where it's without the underscore because of the risk of the underscore character overall. And because I'm a fan of saving uh, a byte or two on the wire, um, if I can. Um, and um, so, I'm okay ultimately with either option. If people like the underscore better, then that's fine. But um, I'm personally leaning towards the more compact version, which means PR 321 rather than 327. And just to be clear, the only difference between these two PRs is this one allows underscores and the other one does not, right? Yes. So okay. it's underscore. And then because I allow the underscore, I also go, um, I do the logical thing and um, use it as a word separator for all the, for all the places where it needs to be. Right. But that is still optional for someone to use it as a word separator. They could still choose to not use it at all. Um, yeah, but then it's a little weird to go and introduce it. I mean, we could, we could do the same thing, but um, I would find it a little odd if we, if we would allow it and not use it. So does that mean that we should encourage people to use it a word separate? Because what I'm wondering is if someone defines an extension and they choose not to use underscore because they just, they, they, they're they like you, they just don't see the point in underscore, so they choose not to. Is it going to hurt the adoption of our spec if we don't encourage extensions to also use underscores? Yeah, well, I don't know. Okay, so it's something to think about, I guess, for the group. Okay, any questions for Clemens? Uh, this is Chem, not, not really a question, but just an observation. I, I would vote for the second one. Uh, it's just a stylistic thing from my point of view. Um, I wonder at the same time if we could normalize the, some of the attribute names. So you know, if we've got event type, why don't we have event source and event data and just sort of keep it all consistent? That, that's, the second, right. that's, the second, that's the thing I didn't do. Right. Uh, which yeah, just the event. On, on last week's discussion is to actually go and, and uh, uh, trim the, the names um, and basically turn this into because you know type and ID and all those things that, that I thought of that but then that was uh, a bit much surgery for my taste sure uh, in a single PR but yeah that's something like trimming the names is something that I'm in favor of um, to you know which also gets us out of some of those underscore cases. Exactly. Yeah. So Jeb, would it be okay with you if we dealt that with that as a secondary issue after this one? Cause I think it is uh, related, but, t but secondary. No, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I think I was just trying to avoid, you know, multiple iterations and if you could do it in one go, then, you know, so be it, but no, that's okay. Yeah. I just, I'd rather deal with one thing at a time. Cause otherwise it'll, it could make, make it harder for us to get anything through. So, okay. Any other questions or comments? I, I do have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, why is this even a topic? Because uh, HTTP headers are case insensitive across the board. Yes. 
because but we have other transports which are actually case sensitive so attribute for instance attributes in mqp are case sensitive and okay. uh, and, JS and json is case sensitive so we have the so the problem we have is that we have parts of parts of the infrastructure we're targeting is case insensitive and parts of it is case sensitive um, and we have observed, I think, uh, some people have observed some libraries um, that they've been using who try to be really clever about how they do casing with, uh, um, with headers and, and did case folding kind of all by themselves for aesthetics. Um, and so that's all causing all kinds of, uh, um, of confusion, apparently. And that's why, that's why um, we said everything that's on the wire is always lowercase, and if you see it's not lowercase, then you have to go and case fold it down. I didn't make a PR for this idea, but what would you think of if it goes if your map goes into a, the JSON header? It, it comes along with a uh, translation object. Like we mm -hmm. use these keys in the header, and it should JSON or uh, AMQP into this field, and we know we can't do direct translation between the two. So here's a lookup guide. I, actually, Scott, I think that's similar to something I, was, I, I had suggested a while ago, which was, in essence, add another, I'm not sure what the proper term is, a, a parameter to the HTTP header. You know, so at the end of the HTTP header value, you, you see a semicolon name equals, and then the, the real name in the right case. I think it's, that, that sounds, it's almost similar to what you're suggesting there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like a decoder ring. <laughs> yeah. Um, how does that work? I'm not sure all it, transports have the ability to add it, that though, actually. It works a lot like how JPEGing works, where you can group long colors into a key and then there's a lookup table that translates what the actual color is for that particular uh, shortened color name. That sounds complicated. It's, it's, yeah, it's very complicated. I'm not for complicated. <laughs> so, so Scott, is this something that you'd like to actually seriously pursue and like write up a PR for it? Or is oh, it just what I'm questioning is, is why force every other transport to have this funny, uh, force them to have cases or, or uh, underscores if they can handle casing and, and the, the trouble is HTTP headers. What we discussed last week was that case folding per, per se is a problem. Right? So if you have if you have if you need to have case folding in your in your system, that is that's called that's causing trouble. That's causing trouble per se. But because only in the case of from HTTP headers to another type of transport. Because because at, because it, it, HTTP is case insensitive, every infrastructure is at liberty to do with, with the headers what it wants. So if you have if you have an event that gets routed through um, multiple hops, and one of the hops in the middle is HTTP, what can happen to you is you start out in, H, in AMQP, the event gets routed through HTTP, gets case folded. Um, lowercase, uppercase, however the intermediary wants because it's okay to do that in HTTP. And then it pops out as something that's completely different on the other side. If we don't constrain it, then um, um, basically the in-case ins ins insensitivity of HTTP kind of bleeds into the downstream transport. But isn't, aren't all the proposals trying to bleed this the same problem with the with the names? I, I, maybe I just misunderstood. No, what, 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 what this what, so we're looking at, at, at the, the lower the underscore variation of, the, of this one, which I'm not preferring, but the I'm preferring the one that is all lowercase. The all lowercase all, all lowercase rule says if you are putting an event on the wire and no matter what 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 wire format you everything has to be lowercase. Yeah, I don't think, Scott, I don't think it necessarily um, bleeds it through as much as this actually avoids the problem. Hmm? I view it as avoiding the problem, not bleeding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
it's it's avoiding the problem of of case molding because we're not allowing uppercase characters. Right. And and we're actually not allowing any any characters where case molding would be would be critical. Does that help, Scott? Uh, I, I'll follow up on the PR. Okay. So, okay. Uh, go ahead. Last last week, Clemens, uh, you you and some other people uh, raised some concerns about underscores also being a problem for some transports, and you said you were doing some research into that. Did you come up with anything? Um, yeah. Um, I have not seen I have not seen further cases. I'm just worried about it. Um, the only thing, so I haven't done I haven't done uh, uh, deep further research into it. Um, All right, I was just interested if you Klaus, had Klaus, had spent some time. Klaus, okay. Klaus just asked what the, um, uh, how will they be handled in H in, in HTB headers? Um, do you have concerns that they're not allowed? Um, you literally make me look up. Uh, I think they are allowed, but I uh, just did some Google research and it, well, the hits uh, suggested that some infrastructure might have trouble with it. Really? Okay, so I think a little with more interesting. Well, if you if you Google underscores in HTTP headers, you get a lot of uh, uh, forum hits where people ask uh, when they have some troubles with I don't know Nginx, Apache, and, and you name it. Apparently, it's some CGI legacy. <laughs> oh, yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> Yet another reason. Yeah. I, have, I, have this, I, I have this hunch about all the, all the separators. I've been, I've, been, I've been trying to do these tricks with separators in URIs and headers for years, and they always run into troubles. So Especially I the protocol. So I got to jump here just for a sec. So I, I apologize. The, the participant list window was half off my screen. And I did not see some of you guys raising your hand. So I, I, I truly apologize for that. So Tim, your, your hand is up. I apologize. Oh, I, I think Clemens probably covered it. I just wanted to point out that if you adopt this uh, proposal, then you're going to be 100% sure that the representation on the wire and the representation in the JSON blob you get and the representation anywhere is always going to be the same bit for bit. Uh, and you're just reducing one place where somebody can get in and screw things up. That's all. OK, thank you. And um, I'm going to mispronounce it. I apologize. Tapini? Tapini? Yeah, yeah. just to follow up, uh, sh surely underscores might not be the best idea everywhere. But for example, with HTTP, when you have only a single separator character, such as the underscore, it's not very hard to just map that to the, so, what to say, idiomatic separator in the transport, say the dash for HTTP. That's, that's true. Like we could, we could do that. It sounds like it's a interrupt problem waiting to happen though. I can't explain why I feel that way. <laughs> I'm, I, 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 I said, I, I make this, I, I give you that as a, as an option effectively um, because um, people were concerned about uh, not having word separators. If you look at 321, you scroll through, um, it's really not that awful. Okay. Not, and, 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 the and, and really in the SDKs, you can go and, and make it, in the SDKs, you will make it idiomatic. You will make it Pascal case where needed and, and Camel case where needed, like if you have strongly typed, strongly typed rep representations. Um, and uh, um, so this is really just about the wire, so I'm not too worried about it. But it's something that um, I'm I'm putting both options up, and whatever wins wins. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to call time on this one because uh, we're almost at the top of the hour. I don't get the sense from the group that people feel like they're ready to to do something as serious as take a vote on the three different proposals that are out there. I think. Again, since people want a little more time to, to think a little bit about this and possibly continue the discussion next week. Yeah. Is that fair? Or is that agreed? I heard comments say yes, but. <laughs> is there anybody, okay, I'm going to make, since someone's speaking up, I'm going to jump in here and say, let's do that. Let's, I was going to try to force necessarily a vote today, but force a vote next week and say, here are the three choices. We're going to have a voting scheme to decide that. But 
I'm going to hold off and say, let's continue, see if we want to continue the discussion next week. Next week's call, we will decide on the voting mechanism to move forward. And one of the choices could be to do nothing, obviously, because we can close all PRs and say we want to find something else. But we'll come up with a voting strategy at next week's call, after assuming the discussion does end. And then we'll figure out how to do a vote at that point. Does that sound fair to everybody? So we'll not be voting next week. We'll be, we'll be deciding the voting mechanism next week, assuming we end the discussion next week. Yep, sounds good. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. Sounds All right. Good. Cool. Thank you, guys. And with that, I don't think we have time for anything else. However, before people start vanishing, let's do the final roll call. Uh, Rachel, were you able to come off mute yet? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. And I heard Tim. I heard Austin, even though I misspelled his name. I'll get that later. David Lyle. David, are you still there? Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, is that David? Okay, what, I know Dan was there, he pinged me offline. Um, Doug, are you there? Is it Doug? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, there you go, thank Doug's you. Here. Yep, Renato. Oh. Renato, are you there? What about Steve-O? I'm here. Excellent, Eric? Hello. Hello, thank you. Klaus? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. Uh, Christine? I'm here. Excellent, thank you. Nathan? Yes, I'm here. Erica? I'm here. Excellent, thank you. And Marcelo? Here. Excellent. Is there anybody I missed? Or what about Renato? Renato are you there? Or David here. Lyle? Oh, Renato, okay, thank you. David, are you back? No, okay, is there anybody I missed? Excellent, I believe we're done then. Thank you guys very much. I'll talk again next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, bye. Bye bye. Bye right, guys, thank you. Bye. Doug? Okay. Uh, uh, hey, it's Christoph. Hi, Clemens. Still there? No. Oh, okay. Dun, 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 dun. Scott, 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 Scott. Actually, uh, the reason I, I got back in is, hey, Clemens, was, uh, we were having a phone call about the, uh, the prep session. That's true. Although I don't see Kathy. Um, actually, you know what, to be honest, I was kind of hoping we'd get on here and say, no one actually did anything other than me set up the templates. That and is then, the truth. <laughs> and I was hoping we canceled the call. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we, we can happily do so because my wife just called me to dinner and I said, well, I'll set up this call. But, you know, if, if that's what it is, then that's what it is. Well, so, okay, Kathy, welcome. Um, yeah. I guess I actually, Scott, you're, you're, you're ticking on it list too. So um, I did create the, the PowerPoint slide deck. I decided to put both uh, slides into one long deck. Uh, that way we can easily just go from one to the other to make sure it all flows nicely. Okay. Um, uh, I didn't put anything in there other than basically the outline that we worked on from the Google Doc itself. Yeah. Um, is there anything you guys want to discuss on this call or is it just a matter of us finding time to fill in our various sections? Uh, we, need to, we need to find time to do some of the work, yes. And I haven't done the work. Right, myself I'm, included. I'm on vacation. Uh, uh, until Wednesday. Okay. Kathy, mm -hmm. is there anything you'd like to talk about or is it just a matter of finding time? Yeah, so I um actually I haven't got time to look to look at the your Google Doc yet. Um would you like to quickly show that the outline? Well, I it, to be honest, it, all I did is take the Google Doc that we looked at last week, you know, the, the the list that showed here's the topic for 10 minutes and then this topic and then that topic. I just put that into a PowerPoint version. That's all I did. 
Okay. Oh, oh, so you didn't put like each slide's uh, title? No, okay, I see. Well, here, okay, here, here. since you're, you're gonna make me do it, here we go. <laughs> so here's the, Sorry, yeah, I just- Last week, by the way. That's fine. I know you're, you're busy. Um, so th this is the slide deck right here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, put the agenda. Obviously a lot of the texture is gonna get removed. Like all this stuff over here is gonna get removed and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Uh, the outline. And then I, I create a slide for each of our sections um, with what was taken or what original Google Doc. And then I figured you guys would just change the text as you see fit. Yep. That's it. That's all I did. Okay, okay I see. Okay. Yeah. So why don't we do this? Um, Clemens, you said you're on vacation till Wednesday. Um, if I don't see any updates to the PowerPoint deck by next Thursday, let's cancel next Thursday's call and talk next week, but let's really, really push to get something in there by a week from Thursday. Okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But I'm, uh, um, I'm the following week. I'm all in, in Redmond, uh, which means I have, uh, very long extended work days, uh, because I have no home. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely going to get something done in, in, in that week. Okay. Okay. So Kathy, you okay with that? We're going to, we we may have a call next week week if there are lots of edits to the doc but if not definitely try to get your edits in by a week from next thursday so two weeks from today yeah 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 um good. so for the for the sdk part doc yeah i i think last time you say you you will you will help with that right you will do that part because i didn't quite follow that part of work or you want to move that to your section uh, i could do that okay here hold on do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll change the title because it's obviously not just demo anymore. Um, yeah, actually, right. Yeah, I'll, I'll fix that. Yeah, I could definitely do that. That's not a big okay, deal. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. What does the deep dive look like? Uh, actually, hold on a minute. Let me do that paste before I forget. Um, well, I guess I already did it. Okay, deep dive. Here we go. There's that. There's the agenda. So you mentioned the deep dive, you know, you say there are only two people. Mm -hmm. So, so how, how it, uh, I still see three of us. How, how right. that works. Yeah, there's, there's, there's the rules of the conference and then yes. people in the actual room, which is right. things. Yeah, so, so Kathy, they, they can only list two names on the agenda, I, I'm sorry, on the session title or in the, in the agenda doc itself. Um, yeah. The fact that there's, it's okay that there's three people presenting. They don't care about that, they, but they can oh, only have two names in the agenda. And since you and Clemens are talking more than me, I thought it made sense for it to be your two names, not me. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. But you, you will still be there talking. Okay, that's good. Right. But, okay. Yeah, I'll still be there. I just, I just, I thought you guys deserved more credit than me since you're talking more. That was it. Okay, I see. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Okay, thanks. I'll well, talk to you guys uh, next week. Yeah. Okay. okay. And just okay. last question. So, Clemens, Kathy, anything else you guys want to talk about? No. Okay. okay. Kathy, mm. last chance. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. So, uh, after I put in slides, we can review it. And then, yep. yeah, at that time, we probably have uh, more to talk. Yeah. Great. All right. Cool. In that case, we'll talk uh, hopefully at, at a minimum in two weeks. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, I would right. to put in by next week, by next I'm Thursday. Gonna, yeah. yeah, I'm going to try to as well. But if we, you know, things happen. So, we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> Bye. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.